I'm using these 32 gallon rubber maids and I have uh, drilled a one and a half inch hole or so, one and five eighths maybe, and fit this um, brass fitting. And running a garden hose with the little shut off valves here. And that connects to my uh, half inch tube. This has a second piece, which as usual with this uh, cheap imported stuff, it just doesn't fit when you try to thread that uh, sleeve that covers this onto this one. It just doesn't work, so I don't use them. So um, my half inch goes and goes on the bottom of my trellis here, and I've already punched my holes with my little hole puncher here. And on the two by four, it's real easy to uh, just get in there and knock out those holes. So I've got a real high quality quarter inch line that is made by uh, Rainbird. And I'm just now uh, doing the last step for this part of putting on these little, what do you call these, little connectors. And then uh, that will pop into my half inch line. Heat these up with a lighter for about three seconds. And that will make it that you can slide that fitting right onto the quarter inch tube real easily. Yes. I heard my name and no one's there. And then those simply pop right in on the hard line. They really pop in a lot easier. And um, I have little uh, little stakes that will hold that, which of course I left upstairs. And I'll have two per pot. So I'll finish running those, then we'll turn it on. Half done. Let's see how I do it. Maybe extreme close up. Boom. D. Okay, here it is, all done. Got all my irrigation lines in there. Hey, Daddy. Yeah? I want to see the blue flowers. All right, let's go see those flowers. Daddy. What do you think about those, Ava? I think they're pretty. Are they so pretty? But where is my tool? Your tool's right there. I don't see my other tool. Well, let's start with that one. <laughs> Are you going to help us in the garden today? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to work. Okay, so I am going to be using 450 milliliters of the Fox Farm Grow Big in my 30 gallons of water here. And four ounces, um, 120 milliliters of CalMac and that 30 gallons is going to feed my 12 tomato plants that I just hooked up the irrigation. But let's get it going. Oh, got a leak there. Looks like a bad fitting. I've got a dozen of those coming. So I'll be replacing that one. 
But even with that loss of pressure, looks like we've got water. It's going all the way down the line. All right, great. So all 12 of my pots, all those lines are running a good stream all the way to the end. So we're looking good. I really like this particular emitter. So that's the final step, putting in these little sprinkler heads on each one, and that's gonna give me a nice even distribution of water. All right, so I've extended the line now over to these tomatoes. There's a few Roma tomatoes and a couple of big red bell pepper plants on the end. And uh, those are gonna be giant pepper plants now because I really heavily feed the tomatoes. And so all the fertilizer that those peppers are gonna get, they're gonna turn into big monsters. So let's turn it on and see how it works. Got a leak here. Have to fix that. Yeah. So I know it worked before when I had the line ending right here and didn't have the sprinklers on. So when I had just the raw line, it worked perfectly. So there's two possibilities. I'm either not getting enough pressure from the gravity to push through these emitters, or I extended the line too long and um, maybe too many emitters as well. Adding a dozen more lines may just be too much. So that's going to be my first thing. I'm going to cut the line right here and exclude these six plants over here and see if that fixes the problem on the main line here. Put that line up a little bit. This takes about three seconds for the lighter. And then to get it deep enough, I do it twice. You can also use a hair dryer or a heat gun. So now that's on there. And I'll go and turn it on again and see if these emitters start to drip. There we go. There they go. See? I'm seeing a little activity, but not enough. So I would say that. I'm going to have to go back to the uh, the lines without the emitters because look, it's just not getting enough power to sprinkle these. So I, I might actually be able to just go higher up. Maybe I'll do that. I'll put the uh, barrel up at the top of the hill and see if more height will uh, fix it with a longer hose. All right, so I've moved my water all the way up the hill and it's a it's a big drop it's 12 feet i guess so that should give me what i need let's see here get my get my hose coiled up down below yeah since we're going with gravity here let's get everything organized and here we go. Turn it on. Let's see if gravity is my friend today. And if this doesn't work, then I'll have to uh, remove these emitters. Looks like I'm getting about the same performance I was. is not very good so 
these emitters obviously need some pressure. And so the only other thing I could do would be to connect a pump. And I may just do that because honestly, throwing a pump in there is gonna be less work than removing 36 uh, drippers. So live and learn. All right, so the last thing that I can do to make this system work, I put a pump in, and that'll put enough pressure behind this, and then some. All right, got the pump on, and let's see what happens down the hill. There we go, those nice sprinklers are going. I need a little adjustment here and there. to replace a couple of them that aren't aren't holding pulling their weight but overall pretty good results so now that I've adjusted all the emitters I turned off the pump and tried gravity again and with the emitters adjusted it's working a little bit better but not nearly as good as when the pump is on. So I think I'll keep operating it with the pump and that'll make sure that I have a consistent amount of pressure to deliver the water where I need it. And also, since I'll be running the pump, I'll have plenty of pressure to connect these two systems. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this up again and uh, see if that works. And if that kills off the pressure that I'm getting over here, I'll have to cut it again. It's really a process of trial and error, especially with me. Maybe an engineer that specializes in this could do calculations and figure it out. But for me, it's this kind of process of trial and error. And I eventually get everything watered. But um, it's not the first time that I've had to kind of redo things on the fly. And... That's why in the hydroponic systems, I prefer the flood and drain when possible because it's a lot easier than a, a drip system. The drip system works great, but it is not always easy to get that final mile and get the water to actually be delivered to the plants that you, the way that you want to, as you can see here. So much so that when I connected a similar system to the grapes and raspberries up here on the hill, it wasn't enough gravity at all, enough uh, height differential to give it any pressure. And in addition, I wanna use timers on that system. And when I use my little timers like this, little Melner timer right here, when I connect that to a gravity feed, it doesn't work at all. For whatever reason, the way that the pressure is stopped inside that timer doesn't allow the gravity feed to work. And I want those to be on a timer and just get watered once a week. And so I'm now running the system all the way down to the timer down here and just connecting it to the garden hose. So it'll run off the garden hose rather than run off of a gravity feed bucket like this one. So I did reconnect them and uh, I'm getting pretty good flow out of everything now. I am using the pump. And this gives me a spread of, you know, a good four square inch uh, soaking area rather than when I put just the open hose, it gives you like a one square inch. Maybe not worth uh, putting those emitters in at all. And actually, in a lot of my systems, I don't. So, and this is the reason, because it's it's uh, usually pretty mixed results. They don't all work consistently. They start and stop. And then they'll also get clogged as the season go out, goes on. So you have to watch them. See, even while this is on right now, I'm having to readjust some that I thought were already fine. So... These little drippers uh, have room for improvement. 
and I'm definitely seeing a loss of pressure in a few of them now that I've um, added that other system in. So, if anybody has a better way, I would love to know what it is. My solution is usually to just leave it with the open hose like I, I did in the initial setup, but uh, my wife pointed out it might be better to have him uh, distribute the water a little better, and I had all these drippers, so I thought I'd give them a shot. And they're pretty good. They're better than most of the others, I'll put it that way. Better than the other ones I've used. So, that's how it'll be.